Welcome again. Today is lesson four, joining June 25th, 2023, renewed in God's love. Lesson scripture, Zephaniah 3, 14 through 20. The folks of scripture is the same. And the key verse today, and before we go to the key verse, I want you to like and subscribe to this Sunday School Lesson channel. Please like and subscribe now. Not so much like you talk to the Lord about that, but I certainly want you to subscribe here. And the key verse, the Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. Zephaniah 3.17 A, B, and the N, R, S, V. And Zephaniah is 3.14 through 20. And sing aloud, it says, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more on that day. It shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord is your God, is in the midst of you. A warrior who gives victory. Rejoice over your gladness. He renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I don't know about you before we get started here today. Just have a few minutes. But I found out God cooked for Elijah when he ran away into the wilderness because he was. A we were created in his own image and after his own likeness. We are after we accept Jesus a royal priesthood. And now I find out the Lord God is singing over us. Oh. What kind of love is this? That is just a blessing. In the introduction, every action has consequences is a familiar idiom that significantly impacts faithful discipleship. Sins of commission and omission are common in all spheres of human life from personal to national and international relationships. The consequences in some cases may have intergenerational impact. Belief system, habits, behaviors are passed on from one generation to another. Some such as slavery, racism, bigotry, and other isms may be systematically entrenched and legalized. God doesn't always intervene as quickly as victims or their advocates affected by such consequences would prefer. However, the scriptures are replete with reassuring records of how God in his own time and in his own ways intervenes. And what we're dealing with here today is a prophecy. Now, when I talk about this prophecy in Zephaniah, our three scriptures, 3, 14 through 20, I have encouraged you since I've been teaching this particular lesson anyway, to always ask the Lord your God the bigger picture. And the answer oftentimes is in his word. I want you to understand this, Sunday school students. Somebody opens up a Bible, they read one scripture, or even if they read two or three and they close the Bible and they run off preaching something, you need to be very wary of them because the Bible is an organism. The Bible, the New Testament describes uh, as, as the body, eyes, ears, feet, this sort of thing. Literally, the word of God is that sort of organism that is jointly and neatly fit together. Old Testament, New Testament, those things feed off one another. Even Jesus said the prophets wrote of him. Much of his claim to the messianic throne is the prophecies that were written in the Old Testament of him. That becomes important, saints, because when we talk about this prophecy of Zephaniah and his time of renewal, this is going to be during that end time, during that right millennial kingdom, this sort of thing. So I want you to certainly read Zephaniah 3, these scriptures, but I also want you to fold into that Isaiah 51, 52, all the way to the end of the book, six chapters, chapter 66. I want you to fold in Revelations 19, 20, 21, 22. Also want you to read Matthew chapter 24. Fold all those things in so you can get a bigger picture of this renewal process that's going to go on. Because again, here's the, the big ideas in scriptures are not located just in one place. They are a patchwork of God's revelation when it needed to be revealed over thousands of years. Here's what I mean by that. Strap in. Get ready for this. So if somebody asked you, they said, okay, if I, I want to know how creation happened, you, you would say what? Well, you need to read Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two. That's what you would say, right? You know what I would tell them? I would say you need to read Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter two, and, and pack in the first five or six verses in the gospel of John chapter one, verse one. Here's this idea that I'm trying to tell you about all uh, these, these bigger ideas have to be put together from the wider scripture. Listen to this. Here's the creation story. Basically, when we talk about what we know as the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but he's just one God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was out form and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit 
of God moved upon the water. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was also in the beginning with God. All things were created by him and for him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I just put together for you. Genesis chapter one, verses one, two, and three. The gospel of John, uh, probably verses one through four or five. And all of that, you see the Godhead. So when you say the, the creative stories in Genesis, you need to include John. Again, saints, get the bigger idea, especially with these prophetic things as well with those texts. Now, when we talk about the promises of joy in Je Zephaniah is a short Old Testament book compromised of only three chapters. The first and second are foundation essential for creating clear understanding and applications of today's prophecy and hopes they convey. Zephaniah 1, uh, 1 through 18 covers God's judgment, day of wrath on the entire world. Zephaniah 2 and the day of wrath is also called the day of the Lord. Because when Jesus rides back, he's going to slay all his enemies and sword his mouth. Remember, first the false prophet is going to be judged in Revelation, day of the Lord. Then the Antichrist, or the, the Antichrist, which the book of Revelation is called the beast. Paul called him the son of perdition. And then the great dragon is going to be bound up for a thousand years. So put all of this big ideas together, saints, so you could see this beautiful picture from the mind of God. Amen. Life application. A passion for serving and using her gifts is like a golden thread that Mrs. Davis pulls from to share memories of her successful past and hopes for the future. Although the circumstances surrounding Zephaniah's ministry are different, his passion and hope also justify his journey uh, toward fulfilling God's purpose for his life. I also want to put something in here for you that, especially since we're talking about the prophets, I'm not one being called to that office. I'm not one that's going to glance over that. Yeah, I'm a church pastor in this season, but I know I will stake my soul on the reality that God sent me as a watchman or AKA or or a confrontational preaching prophet. I'm saying that to point out, I don't glance over that. We're dealing with the prophetic here. So a lot of times in the kingdom of God, what you have to understand about this and when God is going to uh, set all things right, we're going to be renewed at that end times as well, we all have our assignments in life. For instance, and I'm just talking about Ephesians for the church leadership. The Bible says he gave Ephesians 4, some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and we got to pull our brother deacons in a, a book of Acts, 1 Timothy chapter 3, into that sixfold ministry because God, the work of God's hand is done in six. I'm not going to explain that right now. A fivefold ministry, ain't nobody building a ministry by yourself. People, I got the fivefold ministry. Yeah, whatever. You ain't building a ministry by yourself. Hush your mouth. Somebody's helping you. We cannot do things decent and in order and impact the world for Jesus and even tell people they could be renewed in God's love of salvation on this side without being decent and in order. And things are so out of whack with the governing powers and how God set up hierarchy, the, the wider church that we now have pastors that are advising prime ministers, presidents, and kings. That's out of order. There's not one biblical instance where you will see God sent a, a, pa a shepherd from Israel, a pastor of the Old Testament or New Testament to a world leader or a king. Not even once. He sends long wolf prophets to those people. Be, uh, we, we saw this with uh, Moses, the prophet par excellence, going to Pharaoh. We also saw this with Daniel with Nebuchadnezzar. Fast forward to the New Testament. We also saw that with John the Baptist confronting Herod and Jesus, Irish king of kings. We saw him speaking to the governor as well and lightly rebuking the governor, uh, Pontius Pilate as well. God has never sent a pastor to advise a world leader or a king. That's the job of a prophet. Why is that, Brother Dale? That's important because we're talking about re being renewed in God's love. And those we got to come to God in spirit and in truth. Present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, blameless, which is reasonable service. He pull, pours that gift in. We got to walk that gift out. We can't wear other people's armor. Part of the reason the world is so chaotic today is because these world leaders are not hearing what they need to hear in a way that they need to hear it. A prophet is gifted with the language, the aggression, the foresight, the prophetic ability to see into the future to speak to a world leader, president, king, whoever that is. Pastors are men, the real ones anyway, are men with heart of grace. They want to work things out. They want to listen. They want to understand. They don't have the language. They don't have the anointing. They don't have the aggression. They don't have the prophetic foresight in order to speak to these men and women the way they need to be spoken to as evidence in the scripture. Not one time did you he even hear God tell a church pastor like me, I'm, I'm serving off, to go to a world leader. Why? Because pastors, the real ones, they're, they're, they, they got little extra tenderizers sprinkled on their heart. They want to pray for you. They want to understand why you're doing what you're doing. A prophet is will go to a king, they'll go to a world leader, 
and, and they will say something like this. He's going to get your family. He's going to destroy this nation. This is when it's going to happen. You need to repent or it's going to be on your head. This is not a joke. God is not playing with you. That brings Those are the words of a prophet. What pastor you know going to go to a world leader and say that? Prophets, why do you think they ended up dead? Because they went to these people. They spoke truth and they were. When do you, when do you, where's a biblical example? So I'm, I'm off that right now. But when we're talking about the prophetic here, because that's what we're talking about, these end time prophetic events, the Bible says we got to do all things decent and in order, saints. And if we are wearing someone else's armor, we're not doing things decent and in order. To uh, pastors, I'm asking them to stay, do you need to stay in your lane as well? Stay in your lane. And this season, God has given me the heart of a shepherd. He also put me up so I can point, you know, these local leaders back to him and tell them about Jesus and get in their face and call them back from sin. And I've done that. And that's oh, So the Lord is dealing with me, uh, dealing with his people right now because he put the bridle in my mouth with the prophetic. So I'm saying, pastors, please, by the mercies of God, consider your ways. Amen. And finally, and we're talking about being renewed. Saints, there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. There's going to be no Jerusalem. We know all of this because of the prophetic writings. Again, we got to patch all this stuff together to get that bigger picture from the mind of God. But why is it then that somebody has to be a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem? Because sin entered all of them. Sin entered eternity when Lucifer sinned and had to be cast down. Sin entered into God's perfect created earth when Adam and Eve bit the fruit had to be uh, judged and cast out of the garden as well as the serpent. Sin obviously entered Jerusalem because sinners were in Jerusalem. Temple was defiled. Sin was going to be defiled again. So sin has entered in all of those places. So God is going to recreate all this, these things new. We think of time as a linear thing, point A, point B, point C, you know, this linear line when that's not the reality. Reality is it, it's more of a 3D spherical circle. We'll talk about that another time. But God is going to hit the reset button on all of this and he's going to fulfill his wish, his desire, well not his wish, his desire, his will is a better word. He's going to fulfill it by a perfect creation. Now, prophetically, Israel's going to be brought back. They are going to look on him whom they have pierced and mourned as one does like to their only son. And you remember the people that said crucify Jesus? Remember what they said? Pilate said, Pilate washed in, it was like, his blood be on our head and our children's head. And that's exactly what happened. But they, but Jesus is going to come back. Uh, in the end times, you read Revelation, you read, uh, first, second Thessalonians, you read the book of Daniel, you read Matthew 24, uh, you read Isaiah, you read, you know that when this thing gets, especially Revelation, when this thing hits the fan, Israel is going to, as a nation in the end times, they're going to be surrounded and desperate right before God renews everything. I don't mean to get so worked up about this, but my goodness. Find the life application to say that we live in a chaotic, divisive world that privilege some people at the expense of others is an understate. Homelessness, hunger, violence, including mass shootings and voter suppression, intertwined with social, political, and economic inequalities are only a few of the daily threats to peace and security. As adults, we are all aware that we've been personally affected by many social ills that are created as people wrongfully search for utopia. If, you, if we're all uh, dealing in Holy Ghost integrity, many social ills, we are all aware and been personally affected and we have personally affected others, right? When we were in the world of sin, so we need to be uh, faithful and honest with that. Finally, we must be faithful to serve an honor Yah on the Exodus and abide by his commandments to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Amen, saints. And finally, tell somebody this week about the renewing love Jesus. We'll see you next week.